In this video, we are going to talk about treatment of carry malformation. In last video, we talked about investigations. We advised investigations and we diagnosed the patient with carry malformation. Now there is a checklist before decision of planning a surgery. On the first, we see that if there is a syrinx or not. This is a fluid-filled cavity in the cervical spinal canal. So its presence or absence changes our plan of surgery. On number two, we have to see the degree of descent of different structures. These can be cerebellar tonsils, cerebellar vermis, brainstem or different ventricles. We measure the descent in millimeter from the foramen magnum. And for this, we had advised MRI of the patient. On number three, we have to see the CSF flow. How is the CSF flow in the ventricles in the whole of the spinal cord? To know about these dynamics of CSF flow, we had advised sign MRI or PCMR in the last video. On number 4, we have to see cervical vertebral joint stability. On CT scan, we see the bony stability of different structures, especially posterior fossa, cervical vertebral joint and the cervical spinal cord. The treatment of carry malformation isn't so simple that we diagnose a patient and simply perform a surgery. It is not this way. So we discuss the plan now. If the patient has no symptoms of carry malformation and there is a syrinx, syrinx means a fluid filled cavity in the cervical spinal cord. The patient is asymptomatic plus syrinx is positive, we go for decompression surgery. The second is patient is asymptomatic and there is no syrinx, no cavity in the spinal cord. Then we see the descent of structures. If the descent is smaller than 7 mm, we just observe the patient and close follow up is maintained. If the descent is greater than 7 mm, we advise specific exercise to patients. And clinical judgment is included here that if we have to observe this patient or we have to go for surgery. These were the asymptomatic patients. Now is the category of symptomatic patients. Now if the patient is symptomatic and syrinx is positive, then we have to go for decompression surgery. And if the patient is symptomatic and there is a no syrinx, we have three options. You can see the importance of different investigations in planning the treatment. If the descent is less than 3 mm below the 4 mm magnum, then we go for observation. For a descent of 3 to 7 mm, we advise exercises and clinical judgment plays a role here. If the descent is greater than 7 mm, we go for decompression surgery. 